right, let's make a walk cycle. Starting with the uh, uh, face. Let's go ahead and draw a basic face and flash. <clears throat> and uh, let's draw the sprawled out pose. And we're going to make this a very uh, loose kind of drawing for speed's sake. All right, a little thumb, like Mittens Man. There we go, there's frame one. All right, now up in the timeline, we got a little keyframe that now has something on it. Let's click on the next keyframe. And let's convert to a blank keyframe. Now I'm gonna turn on onion skin so I can see in my range the previous frame. And we're gonna draw the complete opposite. So I'm gonna draw the front hand forward now. We're gonna draw his back pretty much traced. Then we're gonna draw his back leg and his foot going back and bent. This is all the front leg right here. We'll trace over that. We'll undo that line. It was nasty. Maybe we'll use the arrow tool to adjust that. And I'm using the first frame as a guide. And the reason for that is because the extreme opposite is uh, very similar to the uh, uh, original. Call it the alpha and omega of uh, opposing actions here. But they're really not the, the meeting point and then the backhand. So now we've got uh, frame one, frame two, complete opposites. Now we're going to take the first one, we're going to copy it after the second one so it goes back. See? Now click on the first frame. Insert a frame there, so now we have a keyframe that extends for two frames. Uh, insert another frame at that keyframe, so we have two frames there, and then uh, that's that one. The last one, the meeting point, we don't need that. And we're going to highlight the full the full range. You can even highlight the the last keyframe. Say everything. And then uh, convert to keyframes. I'm sorry, convert to blank keyframe. And now it'll insert a blank keyframe at those uh, spots where there was no keyframe, but the extension of the drawn keyframe. So now we've got blank keyframe, keyframe, blank keyframe, keyframe, blank keyframe. You get the idea. Now we got to draw the uh, the in between of this. I'll draw his nose kind of overextending. His ear, see C C, and then I put a C between that. And take note that the lighter color is the previous the uh, the previous uh, frame. The destination uh, keyframe is distinguishable from the other because it's darker. Something like that. Okay, now it's going to the dark one, and the dark one's bent. So then that tells you that that's a foot that's planted. that and 
and there's uh, a bent foot. Alrighty, turn off onion skinning temporarily. Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba. Now you can almost copy this keyframe and then switch some of the drawing over here, but let's not do that. Let's go ahead and take the time to actually draw that extra information. I need to change my range so I can just see the before and after. That's easier. Now I'm not being too precise about my drawing here, just so that we can, let's go back. Let's see, his, his arm swings. Let's give his arm, as it goes back, a little bend. That doesn't look quite right. That just doesn't look quite right. looking at and the hair really I'm not going to take too much care about that and that wasn't there before okay now in this one we know the destination for the front leg is extended so draw it to the kneecap go back tuck it into his his butt, round it out. It looks kind of like how he might look. And then um, draw the other leg firmly planted. Probably could have bent his, his other leg. Oh well. Turn off onion skinning. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. And then the rest is, uh, let's go ahead and use a keyboard shortcut to make things roll a little bit faster here. And highlight all that stuff and convert to blank keyframes. So now we've got a blank keyframe everywhere. Now the important thing is to exaggerate at this point so what I like to do is look at the previous frame and this is going to be our anticipation uh, frame so what comes after this Let's see he's, he's going to put his foot a little bit further in anticipation you see and this one's gonna go a little bit down okay. and then maybe the the eye or maybe uh, the nose will be a little bit rubbery and kind of come down a little bit and maybe uh, in anticipation or the, the key word here is anticipation what are these lines doing in anticipation for his next uh, position. Yeah. Subtle little movement. Okay, maybe the foot goes up a little bit. And this is where the beauty of redraw really shines. Because now you get the little anticipation and then really, really fast. And now we got exaggeration uh, for this one. I like to look at the future frame, and this is where you get to uh, 
have some real fun and overextend however however you see however you see fit I mean there's technically no right or wrong answer but I mean you want the um, the motion to be understood your exaggeration okay let's take a brief look at that Ooh, anticipation and exaggeration oops I forgot a line or I did because I'm all alone here talking to myself all right Boom. Okay. Repeat the process. Okay. Now, anticipation. Where is this line going to go? Oops. Where is all these going to go? Don't want to go too far. Oops. Oh, boy. This one going like that. Let's go ahead and thicken this line up and the anticipation for this. If you haven't uh, if you've taken the time to do this while my computer's rendering an episode of Dork Legends, a series on that new YouTube channel that I've been talking about, the Stringini Brothers. If you haven't checked out the Stringini Brothers, please do. The link is in the description. All right. Now let's go ahead and do the last exaggeration. And if you remember, this last frame is uh, oops, that's a little too exaggerated for this. I mean. Is there such a thing as too much exaggeration? Yeah, I think there is. I, in a way, I mean, if if I if I go ahead and make this guy's arm doing this, you know, you can do that if you want. Go ahead, have fun. Hey, you know, if if you can if you can if you can get away with with doing some crazy uh, parallel universe animation, be my guest. And this is the result of what you think an exaggeration is. Let's see if the public. Uh, you know, buys it. Hey, you know, that's what it's all about. It's about communication, get, you know, uh, getting a little story out. And if your story is about this guy's arm going bananas and walking around, that's part of his character. Have, have at it. And let's bring the foot. out his back and and let's go ahead and make mittens that's a terrible hand for him Eh, that might be a little too crazy for me, for my taste. 
and the thing is, the more exaggerated I go, I tend to want to put more keyframes in. That's why I am sort of censoring myself here because I want this to look semi decent um, for you guys. All right, now this duplicate at the end, see, it's a duplicate. This can be deleted, remove frames. All right, so now, boom, boom, you got a nice little running guy. All right, and then you can clean up the gaps. All right, that may be a little, uh, <laughs> a little bit too fast. So at the, at the points of uh, what I typically will do is, let's insert some frames uh, throughout because we're at 30 frames per second, which is my cup of tea. What I'll do is the, uh, an the anticipation frames will get an additional frame. And also the exaggeration frames, which is, this is one of them. And that's another exaggeration frame. All right, so there you go. Boom. There's your, uh, there's your little walking. No, that's actually a stride. A little striding man. Enjoy. And I know this tutorial was helpful. So you're welcome in advance. <laughs> Have fun.